so this is a video I wanted to make for a while because a lot of modding guides are inexhaustive. Uh, but this will be a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to make a melee skin, starting with your first install. Um, you don't need to have any experience with modding or with art. This is a pretty intuitive process. Uh, I'm also going to try to make this accessible for both vanilla melee and 20xx. So there are three things you need to download, and I'll leave links for all of those in the description. Uh, the first is GC Rebuilder. And you're also going to want to download DAT Texture Wizard. Uh, you're going to download these and extract it to any folder, just like you would for an, any Melee ISO. First, you're going to want to open up GC Rebuilder. Uh, this tool allows you to deconstruct your ISO into all of its files, uh, change them around, and then rebuild it back into a full ISO. So once it's open, go to Image, then find and select your Melee ISO. Over on the right, it will have all of your game files. Go to the node at the top that says Root, right-click on it, and select Export. Then choose a file location that's handy and send it there. This will put all of your game files into a place where you can access them. Next, we're going to go to DAT Texture Wizard. Uh, DAT is the file extension for all Melee textures, uh, and they all follow the same formula. For character skins, it's going to start with PL, then it is going to be followed by the character code. And finally, it is going to be followed by the color. So RE is red, BU is blue, BK is black, and so forth. Stages work the same way, except the prefix is GR instead of PL. All files end in DAT in Vanilla Melee. In 20XX, character skins may end with .LAT or .RAT, depending on if you press the left or right trigger on the character select screen to pick an alternate skin, but the files work the same way as DAT files, and you can still use them in DAT Texture Wizard. For 20XX, you can also have up to 10 custom stages, so the file extension may be .0AT, .1AT, .2AT, and so forth, but they also work the exact same way as DAT files. Now that we have that all under control, we can start getting to work on actually making a skin. It's generally good practice to take whatever skin you're going to make and copy and paste the original somewhere else on your computer so you have a backup just in case you screw something up along the way. Now we just need to pick a skin to work on. I'm going to use Red Falco. Once we have it up, we get all the pieces that make up the textures. It's pretty intuitive to see, there are just a few things you need to keep an eye out for. First is that you'll notice that it has the dimensions of each texture. You cannot upload a file that is larger than the original in either direction. If you won't crash anything, it'll just pop up an error message saying that this file is too large, so it won't let you do anything. You can upload something that is smaller than the original, and it will stretch to fit. But be careful about doing this, because once you upload a smaller image, you cannot go back to the original size. The smaller image is now the maximum file size you can use. Now, we're just going to do a simple skin for this tutorial, so we're just going to switch the color of his jacket to purple. So to do that, take all of the textures that have his jacket, and you can select multiple consecutive textures by holding shift when you click, and you can select multiple individual textures by holding control. So select all the textures and then right click and hit export selected textures and put them somewhere nice that you'll be able to remember where they are. Now, the last thing you'll need to download, if you don't have it already, is an image editing software like Photoshop. Uh, I use GIMP because Photoshop is expensive and GIMP is free, and I highly recommend it. I haven't missed using Photoshop at all, so I'll leave a download link for that in the description. So once you have your software open, just load the textures. Now, let's say we want to make this jacket purple. We can just use color mapping to rotate it. And once you've done that for all three of the textures, export the files back to the folder you got them from. Once you've done that, uh, go back to DAT Texture Wizard, and for each texture, you're going to replace it with the edited image by right-clicking and hitting Import Image. Be careful for this part, because you, if you upload the wrong image and it has smaller dimensions, you're going to have to close Texture Wizard and do it over again. Once you've done that, you're going to hit File, Save, DAT As. Now, it is crucial that you keep the file name with the same base. 
You can put parentheses in to say purple jacket if you want to share it with someone, but the color you start with has to be what you end with. If you try to change the file name of, say, plfcre.dat to plfcbu.dat because you think all the dimensions and textures have the same properties, it will crash Dolphin. It just doesn't work. I'm not sure exactly why this is, but you cannot use different colored skins in different slots. Now that the new file is saved, you're going to copy it, take the export folder you created earlier, and paste the file into there. Now that the files are changed, you can go back to GC Rebuilder, hit Root, Open, and then find the root file from the export folder. Once you've done that, you'll hit Save. Then, go find your Melee ISO. Click on it and save over the ISO. Once you've done that, hit Rebuild. When making skins, it's a good idea to use Dolphin and an ISO on your computer. If you try to save it to a USB or to an SD card so that you can use it for a CRT setup, it'll take about 20 minutes to rebuild, but if you do it on your computer, it only takes about 10 or 15 seconds. Make sure the skin looks the way you want it before you were going back and forth messing around with edits, uh, and then you can put it onto a CRT setup and you'll be fine. Now your skin should be ready, so just open up Dolphin, hit refresh, and your ISO should be good to go. Now, there are more tools you can use if you want to get further into skin modding. So there's things like HS Draw, which I will leave a link to in the description as well. Uh, there are also a number of Melee modding discords. Uh, for example, I'm part of the Melee Workshop, uh, which I found very helpful. Uh, but this alone should be enough to get you at least very basic skins. So you're off and you're ready to be part of the world of Melee modding.